the Helix webinar series. Today's session is uh, one of two, actually. We do have an, a, a US session that's going to be happening next week. But for today, we've got a webinar on what's new in digital workplace. Uh, joining me is Carl Anders Folk, our lead product manager. Many of you have probably met with or um, been on webinars with. We're also with uh, Silke Rad, our principal solutions engineer, who's going to be doing the demo part for today. Um, just a couple of reminders. We do have the Q&A section of Zoom. It is going to be broken down where we're going to take uh, points in the session where we will ask for questions or talk live. However, if you do have questions, please use the Q&A section of Zoom, which you'll find at the bottom, not the chat function. And if we do have time at the end, it's roughly going to be 90 minutes. Um, we're going to try to have some breaks for your questions. Um, but we will do our best to get through everything today. Hopefully you'll enjoy this session. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Kaf to start us. Hey, everybody. Uh, inspired today to talk about what we have built in DWP for the last um, about a year. And I'm even more happy to have Silke with us. She has been a very active and knowledgeable uh, DWP user for many years. And uh, I don't know, Silke, do you want to say hey, hey to everybody and uh, tell us a little bit what you're doing? And don't forget to, mem rem <laughs> to talk about your cooking labs. I think that's interesting for people to hear about. <laughs> yeah, so hello from, <clears throat> hello and good morning from my side as well. Um, as Kaf mentioned, my name is Silke. I'm a preset person in Germany, located in Frankfurt, and um, I'm working with Digital Workplace since since years now. So I have, I would say, good, very good knowledge about it. And as Kaf mentioned, um, I'm also doing some so-called cooking labs. So um, together with our customers in Germany, in Austria, in Switzerland, um, we built some connections. We came together. We did some. We did some nice um, <clears throat> technical stuff around that hands-on session and do some cooking together, which is really great. And um, I'm looking forward to do that in different other countries as well. So and uh, today I'm happy to do some demonstration on our current um, environment or current um, version on digital workplace and what's new back to you yeah. so so yes these uh, cooking labs is uh, a good opportunity i think i would say the german community of dwp users uh, know this a lot because people are gathering in the same room uh, silk has normally created a cookbook not for cooking <laughs> uh, food but for doing things in DWP. So that is, is a very good thing. And then network, get to know each other while cooking food and eating together. It's, it's a very good thing. I've been invited to a couple of those sessions and it's uh, good memories and good, good relation building opportunities. So I'll start a little bit just to set the stage and make sure we have the messaging around the digital workplace uh, uh, current for everybody it you might have seen and heard this before but we're going to talk about um, uh, the, the new functionality we released in 221 04 05 06 and 07 so these are the the patch numbers and uh, traditionally we haven't really released many features in uh, the patches before it has been more to fix things but over the last year, we have actually added features also in the patches. So it's uh, it's what Silk is going to share. And then I'm going to talk about what we are working on uh, short term and a little bit longer term. So uh, that's the topic for today. And uh, as you know, this is about where does BMC invest and uh, this meeting today is about the the tools which we give to our employees in the company most of the the things we are doing are, are for the agents in IT traditionally that is what we have done since long and that is in this AI service management AI operations management uh, 
thing where ITSM, where all the monitoring tools and everything is. But we also have the modern observability, which is really identifying if there are problems in the infrastructure and fixing it as quickly as possible. What we also have is uh, the, the lines of business and collaboration team, which build on top of our uh, products, build solutions for different processes in companies. So a line of business would be HR, for example, or facilities or, or other departments in a company. And the processes they have to to run their business will need some IT support. And that's what, what's done there. Uh, in DWP, you see a lot of that because we're using the studio in DWP. We're using other things in DWP to, to enable these capabilities. Uh, employee experience, uh, what is that? What do we mean by that? Uh, it, In short, it's important that people in the company employees are productive and that they are engaged, that they like to use the tools they are put in front of them. And as you know, people work from home or from office or from remote locations. And this is where we take DWP right now. It's a little bit more extended in this sentence. And uh, DWP today looks more like this than it it uh, looks like the old SRM console that some of you might still use, but today it, it looks nice and it works on the mobile, it works on, on everywhere. So employee experience is, of course, digital workplace, which is meant to give employees a self-service uh, capability. You, you really don't want to sit in the phone for half an hour and wait. You can do things on your own in the digital workplace. That's the whole purpose. And to make it pleasant so people want to use it, so people want to stay in the company, uh, we have developed the studio. There are quite a few new capabilities in studio we'll talk about today. Uh, we combine it with um, the service health and that is the monitoring tools in our company where you define different services and you can see if a service is there or not how does that relate to employees then yes because if you can tell the users that there is a problem with things or you can send notifications to customers about the different services we deliver uh, you can avoid uh, a lot of work and the back end that is repeated. So you instead use the, the digital workplace to communicate that. Uh, when you are remotely working, you might come into the office, you want to book uh, a room for a meeting or for sitting to work. And then we have the locations and floor maps. And in DWP, there is also multiple things for collaboration and peer support. Uh, uh, many people use Teams for this, but in some cases it might be more efficient to use uh, what we have in DWP because it's related to the, the assets or the components you have in your infrastructure. Uh, virtual Agent is uh, our traditional chatbot uh, with a conversational UI, and it's uh, currently based on IBM Watson technology and it has many channels. This is an area we're going to talk a little bit about at the end of the call. We are bringing uh, new capabilities in, into this area. And uh, that is together with the knowledge management tools we have in our solution. And capturing and sharing knowledge will make the company more productive, definitely. So this is essentially where what we deliver within the employee experience. It's digital workplace, but it's also these other things. Uh, and uh, today there are many initiatives to uh, digitalize your organizations and uh, creating a modern workplace is important because it's predicted that if I have been at BMC for quite some time, Silke, <laughs> 
is a little bit longer than I even. I've been here 23 years, and that is a long time. It's predicted that our grandchildren will swap jobs much more often, and then you need a an attractive workplace to keep people in the company. Otherwise, they will go for, for someone else. And that also fits uh, with this one, improve the employee experience. And of course, uh, making sure that all the, not just IT, but all the organizations in the company, all the lines of businesses have a good IT support behind the scene. So this is where we see digital workplace fit and it is meant to be a tool where you can generate a, a very effective uh, workforce. And uh, it, the, the, the mantra is when we develop the product is let the employees get the job done with as little effort as possible. So that you will see on some of my slides later on. So that's about the slides. Uh, now I'll hand over to Silke to talk about the new functionality. And uh, we have in these releases, uh, 40 in the 22.1 releases, 40 new ones, new features. And in the previous one, two years back, we had 49. And now in about uh, before Christmas, I hope, we're going to add uh, like 15 more features. So almost 100 new features to look at and adopt and use uh, if you upgrade to the latest releases. So really encourage you to take a look and uh, use what you have paid for and get value from it. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that interaction with you as the community using the product is very important. So in general, more than 50% of what we add in terms of features are based on the ideas that you raise on communities. I hope you feel that uh, you get response when you add something to the communities. Maybe not the same day, but over time we build in more and more features. We have uh, of the about 1200 i think open ideas on communities we have over these two years uh, delivered 250 ideas or used 250 ideas to decide what we are actually going to put into the product so to me as product manager it's very important and a big asset to help me drive the product and make it better so silke are you ready Yes, I'm ready. I'll start sharing my screen. I'll, I'll keep this one for the next minute. Next minute. Okay. Okay. Can you see my sh screen right now? I can see it. Perfect. Least. Perfect. So, um, Hopefully, everybody of you knows in the meantime that we have the Digital Workplace Studio where you can create um, appealing pages. And this is a functionality I use today um, to put some stuff together, which is new in the last um, in the last uh, patches. Yeah. So I want to start with something which is new, which is called um, to do's. So what we have is now that you um, can view and complete so-called to-dos as an end user in digital workplace. And this is how this can look like. So what I did in the studio page is I added a component, an activity component, and I just filter for to-dos. And a to-do is like a single task to the end user. Yeah, And the end user can then um, work on that, complete it, um, and um, the action behind that and complete the to-do. So for example, as an end user, I can see there are a couple of to-dos assigned to me. I can easily select one of the to-do. I can add an image if I want to. I can add a comment if I want to. And at the end, I can mark it as complete. Yeah, And a good example for these kind of to-dos are, for example, onboarding yeah so if, when 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 you're when you have an onboarding process 
um, there are a couple of things which needs to be done in different line of businesses. And always you have something for the end user to do as well. And this is a nice stuff you can do. So in a case for an onboarding case, for example, you can assign a special task to the end user and the end user can then work on that task in digital workplace. Yeah. And of course, you can filter on to-dos as well. So when I enter some filters here, there are types and there is new type of to-do. I can also work in a list that depends on how you want to work with digital workplace um, like, you, like you do that most. Yeah. Quite important to understand is that the to-dos, um, they are... As they are assigned from business workflows. So to get the to-dos working, you have to work with Helix business workflows. So when you're working on a case, like I mentioned, an onboarding case, you can assign an, a so-called task from type to-do to an end user or to a person. And when you do that, this person will then get this tile in digital workplace as a to-do. Yeah. So important to understand this works um, together with business workflows. It's not working with ITSM so far. But this is a nice functionality um, which came with, I think, patch five. And um, we really all like that a lot. Then when we come to workflow and studio enhancements, um, maybe you remember in the past, we have something which was called a multi-loop. Yeah, a multi-loop option uh, in the workflow. That means you can design a workflow to process uh, multiple areas of data within a single activity in a workflow. Yeah, but the bad thing about that is, um, or was, that is not that flexible for the questionnaire. Yeah, so it's only a repetition of um, the process activity. So to give you an example how that looked like um, right now or in the past with a multi-loop only, we open that multi-lobe. I could um, choose a couple of users, for example, to get a spot bonus. I answer some question, enter a justification, and I submit that case. But you see, there's only one questionnaire I have to answer. It's not that flexible. Yeah. So at the end, I can approve that, and I have my multi um, my multi loop, and you see the nominated people in a table. Yeah? And at the end, I have maybe a couple of cases around that. Yeah? So if I do a refresh, I see the fulfillment. There are two cases created based on the workflow. So this was the multi-loop. Now with um, the newest version, just go back to my page. We also have something which is called repeatable questions. Yeah, And these repeatable questions can be used in the questionnaire in the workflow. And that works like you configure a group of questions under an umbrella question yeah, and make this repeatable. And this gives you much, much more flexibility and you can request multiple variants of an item. Yeah. And at the end, of course, that helps to be uh, to save more time and be more efficient, yeah, and to request um, similar items in one request. But you are quite flexible in the questionnaire. How that looks like is if I just request that, I have again my questionnaire. I always um, I also have the spot bonus, but now I nominate each people or each person directly. So for example, I nominate this person, I have a justification and this person gets 500 bucks. And now I nominate a second person. Yeah, so it looks different, works different. And I enter the justification again. But now, as you see, I'm quite flexible in the questionnaire. So I have different people, but I can answer each question differently. And again, I submit that request and at the end, I will have the same. I have two cases from the fulfillment. And <clears throat> to just open that, you see, I also have two cases in the fulfillment. And for each case, I have the different questionnaires yeah, or the different, um, the different questions and answers. Yeah. How that works in digital workplace, maybe to show you shortly. Okay, I have that. Can I get rid of that Zoom thing? No. Okay, how that works in digital workplace. Let's do it this way. I search for the repeatable question service <clears throat> in the catalog. I open that. And the difference now is when I open the questionnaire, I now have 
my umbrella question, which is a nominate people, and I have all the other questions underneath. Yeah. And as you can see here, the nominated people is a process question. And the difference now is <clears throat> that I have here an output format of type object. Yeah. So this is quite new. This is an object in the questionnaire, and I hand over the object to the workflow at the end. Yeah. And that's the difference now with the repeatable question. So this is how that looks in the questionnaire. And this is the same in the workflow. I hand over the object to a subprocess <clears throat> like this one. And again, in the variables, I also have the object nominated people here. And this object I hand over to the subprocess, each person, and then I have the multi instance loop. So this process, subprocess, will be um, called several times for each person. And I hand over all the information from the questionnaire. But the questionnaire, as mentioned, is, is flexible. So I really have different variants. That's quite important to understand. This is how that works. Repeatable question, which is new. Going back, oops, <clears throat> going back to my entry page, we also have something new, which is called validation. Validation is quite important because um, validation uses an innovation studio process to check whether the inputs provided by the end user is valid yeah, and meet um, specific criteria. So for example, you have a text area or a text field question, and this can be validated. And that can be validated um, based on the innovation suite process, but this can be also validated on the uh, based on the innovation suite process. And you maybe ask a third party application or you call the third party application. So this is possible as well. And you really validate the input. Now how that looks like is um, to show you one example is for example, the, I have something created for a change of work. I did that for a customer. And imagine you're an end user and you want to change your working time. Yeah, and you give some information in there. This is information I call from a third party system via REST API. So this is all nice. But now we come to the validation question. So here I have to enter the new time and the days I want to work. Yeah, and in Germany, we have a, a special labor law. So officially, we are not allowed to work more than 40 hours um, a week um, in five days, for example. And when I want to reduce my working time, I have to check if the new working time does fit with the German labor law. Yeah, And to validate this, I can, for example, enter some information like one, two, three, and check that. And now I have um, a, a different pattern. So the pattern is I have to enter it in this format. Yeah, but this is something we already have since years now that I can check for pattern. What is new is what new is that I can really validate. So for example, if I enter something in the correct pattern, like thirty three two in three days, so I want to work thirty two hours in three days, I can validate that. And you see, this does not fit with the labor law. So in the back end, I have, I call an innovation suite process and this process double checks if the working time um, is correct. So if I, I'm not working more than eight hours a day. Yeah. And this is not correct, of course, because 32 divided to three is more than eight hours. So I get this error message. If I change that to four, for example, you see, everything is fine and I can proceed with the answering the questionnaire. Yeah. So this is how validation works. Works on text fields and text areas. And in the end, you have the, pro, um, the innovation suite process, which validates the data. How that looks like in the catalog, <clears throat> I can show you. Go for validate. Oh, no, the working time. We want to see the working time. Um, where is it? Change of job. This is it. That's the correct one. So if I open that in digital workplace, I go to the questionnaire and search for my validation question, which is this one. And there you can see there's an external validation behind that. So if I, when I open that, I have my regular expression, which I check. That was the first error message we got. Yeah. So that's 
something we already had since years. But this is the external validation. And this is a process I'm calling the innovation suite process, which really validates the information I enter. And this is then the error message I send um, or I publish in case this does not work. And here is a process input variable, the new working time I hand over to the validation process. Yeah, that's how that is configured in Digi Workplace Catalog. And again, there is a process um, in based on Innovation Suite, which does the validation. And again, you can also validate against third-party applications. So if you want to pull some data from third-party, double-check that this is all possible. Yeah. Then going back to my page, what else do we have? Um, since patch four, we also support something which is called a broadcast API. So for example, if you if you want to create a new broadcast based on API, REST API from a third party application, um, from a BMC application, for whatever reason, from, from business workflows, for example, because you want to inform a training or like in this case, directly from a service request, this is possible. So we support an, an REST API for broadcast right now. And in case you want to use that, and I created a service out of that, I can enter some title for the broadcast, um, the message I want to send, yeah, and who will receive the broadcast, like for example, says, and when should the broadcast start? So let's do it for tomorrow, and it ends the day after tomorrow, yeah, and should be of type information. And then I can easily submit that request, and the workflow behind that is calling the REST API, the broadcast rep, as broadcast REST API, and then creates a new entry for the broadcast in Digital Workplace Admin Console. So if I go to the Digital Workplace Administration Console to the broadcast area and I do a refresh, then there should be my new broadcast I just entered. So very simple. And tomorrow, this broadcast will then pop up um, for SES when he opens the digital workplace console. Yeah, so a nice new functionality with the broadcast API you can use. <clears throat> then going down, we also have um, new functionality or new features for digital workplace studio. So you can now customize the appearance of some catalog sections. So these are catalog sections behind that. And this is a catalog section. And you can configure these catalog section with these kind of small tile size, including a shadow, excluding a shadow, or you can have these large tile size. So you're quite flexible now configuring these um, components in studio capabilities. So this is something which is new in the current version as well. Yeah. Also regarding um, Digital Workplace Studio and also regarding Digital Workplace Catalog and Asset Groups, we now support an asset filter. Yeah. So for example, you have or you create a new studio page, especially for Germany or especially for America, and you, you want to show only the printers of Germany or the printers of America for that person. Yeah. You don't, you don't want to flood this person uh, with lots of printers in a view, in the my stuff view, for example. You just want to show them the German printers to make it easy, more structured, easy to find the right things. Yeah, for the end users. And this is how you can do that. So you can create a new asset group in Digital Workplace Catalog. And the, the new feature is that you can now create a condition on that, a filter. So in this case, only the printers of America will be shown in that page. Yeah, so this is a new functionality as well. And how that looks like is again, I go back to my Digital Workplace. <clears throat> and go to the asset groups. And for the asset groups I use, that was the American printers. You see now there is a filter, which I can, a condition which I can set. Yeah, so in this case, I have a filter for printer and for the region America. Yeah, and based on that filter, I can use this asset group in creating, uh, while creating a studio page, but this is also working, of course, for the my stuff area. So when I go to the my stuff area, which is called services and um, assets in my demo environment, I also can use this um, filtered 
asset group here as well. So another new functionality we have um, in digital workplace. <clears throat> What is also new is that we can now um, use um, buttons and um, use catalog items for the buttons. So when I use when I create a button in a studio page, before I can um, open a URL page or page based on that, now I can also um, assign an um, a catalog item or a bundle item. So when I click on that button on the studio page, I then can directly um, jump to a service request. And that's exactly the same for the other button and where I can jump to a bundle. Yeah, this is possible. As mentioned before, we just could enter an URL directly. Now we can also use the service item, uh, the service and the bundle item for buttons as well to, to link to a special page or to link to a service request. Yeah, so this is also something which is new. And then we also have some sample pages included now with patch six and patch seven. They are automatically included um, in the environment. And to give you an idea, when you start with creating studio pages, to give you an idea how that can look like and um, how you can work on that, we provide a couple of sample pages for different verticals um, to give you an idea how a new studio page can look like. So for example, this is for fashion. Yeah, this is an example. And we also have some other examples, for example, for automotive, yeah, vertical automotive. This is another example. And this is just an idea to give you an idea as mentioned, and that you don't need to start from scratch when you create a new studio page. Yeah, so this is available out of the box, different sample pages, as well as our out of the box um, portals for HR service management, or also for IT um, for IT homepage. So with the latest patch, we also provide some out of the box IT related content, a content pack, including some out of the box services, including an IT central homepage based on the studio capabilities, including templates and workflows out of the box. Yeah, this is also quite new in digital workplace and also ITSM in this case. That should be the highlights um, of the latest versions. So I can hand over to Kaf in case there are no other questions related to that. Do we have any questions? Okay. Uh, well, uh, may I ask hello to Mark? Ah, hello, Mark. I have one question I asked this. Uh, John wanted to answer, I want some details, but I ask directly. If I want to validate uh, an answer of the question in uh, in catalog service, mm -hmm. I can send only this one answer. I cannot yes. send uh, more of the answers. What if I want to... What if I want to check something depending on three of the previous answers, you know? Yeah, that's a that's a good question. Um, so far, um, we only can hand over one um one field to the validation process. Um okay. that's and, and the field has to be a text field or text area, as mentioned. Yeah. Um and then you can check in the question, uh, in the validation process. Um, we cannot combine, at least right now, we cannot combine different variables um, for the validation process. Yeah, yeah. that would so be that, great, that would great be, idea. Yeah, yeah, a great idea for, for the calendars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for I everything. Got that question yeah, times this, already. This is needed. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Yeah, it's it's one of the things we are discussing, uh, Sam. Have you turned off my video? I can't turn my video on. It's saying you um, need to stop me. No, I haven't, but I can bear with me. I will have a quick check. Hang on. Um, I see. I Do you want to try, again? try again? There you go. Now, now it works. Thank you. Gideon, do you have a question? Uh, yeah, so this is about the questions. Can we add images in the uh, questions which we are posting in the 
section over there because many of our customers ask the same question like uh, can we add some images and then some type of text and context to be added on it do you do you refer to a question on the questionnaire or in the comments in in both places you can add images either as attachment or you can drop them copy and paste and so on into the field what you do is you use the the text area field on the questionnaire so you drag okay. that onto the questionnaire and then you can turn on what is called rich text formatting and that allow you to use images in in the question uh, when it comes to the um, comments after you have raised the request you can always uh put yeah, images com in there comments i heard that uh the, some of the earlier uh, versions had this mm -hmm. like they i mean bms included this rich text feature on it but the question was no, i was not aware maybe i'll just check it out on the new version yeah the text area field is what you use there is a check mark that you, uh, an option you can turn on okay thank you You can embed an image into the question set prior to the user going into it. So if you click submit request or request now, could you have an image present in the question for the user to answer or can only users add images? You mean in the description? Yeah, so if you, if you had a question and you wanted to embed an image for a user to see as part of that question, could you do that as an admin so that the user could see that image before they answered it? Um, we I no. I know that we had we had we did money one improvement for the upcoming release that was to uh, uh, format the text in the description and add a link. Oh. I need to check if we also added image capability. I I don't think we did get to that yet, but that is what you ask for when you have the description. You would like to put the image there. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. for example, the current version you, that's not possible. Yeah, that's it. I, I, that's fine. It's just double checking because, like I say, if we wanted to add an image, you know, if you wanted a bit of information, you wanted to give them a bit of guidance on that a small image to show them how to do something, could we include that in the question set? But like you say, a link will take care of that still for now, and we'll just see what comes in the future. So yeah, thank you. That answers my question. We are also working on uh, adding uh, a what should we call it a, a kind of preloaded attachment so let's say you want to uh, have a form a paper-based form or pdf form that you want people to read you can attach that in that is uh, planned for sometime early next year thank you <laughs> uh, also carl uh, is there any plan for pmc to uh update or uh, give the feasibility the administrator can modify the email templates on dwp portion the image templates what the email template like email i want to add template. okay yeah. the email template okay yes yes <laughs> uh, right now we have uh, a possibility to change two of the notifications through templates, as you know, only two of about 20, I think it is. Uh, and when we looked at uh, adding those other 20, we realized it's a lot of work. So what we have decided to do is to uh, use the platform. You know, we, we converged a platform uh, to a common platform. And in the platform is a notification engine where you can create email templates and you can create triggers when those emails are sent. So we are actually, we have done a proof of concept to test that it really works. So we are working on that. I can't tell you right now how long it's going to take because it's if we're going to take all 22 it's it's or whatever it is, it's going to take some time. But I think we're going to work on it on a one by one basis. So we migrate over maybe these two that already have templates uh, to use the platform instead. It's, um, 
it's definitely one of the top priorities to to handle that because it, many people want to modify the email <laughs> exactly the got it team. yes it's coming okay thank you hi um, i have a question on the the promotional banners that cycle through on the digital workplace uh, in the helix demo instance you are showing where it announces about critical alerts so this means that announcement has to change right but it also has got a background of an image so is it something that automatically can be done by taking the message from another system or is that done manually uh the banners you're talking about the banners you can put on a studio page i think that's right yes and it also yeah. makes announcements like critical alert it will be solved by today 6 pm like that yeah yeah that, that is currently manually driven what we have is the these uh, uh, broadcasts that silky was showing you they are, are driven from uh, uh, an api so those you can use for that kind of notifications would that help oh y yes yeah sure thank the, you the other ones i mm. i don't know if we will use for so to say ad hoc notifications or or api driven notifications we haven't really discussed that but if you have a, a good use case do you mind creating an idea on communities for that uh, describing yeah. a little bit what it would help you with because um, it's always good to get an understanding and it also helps other people to understand what you want to use it for so they can vote on it if they think it's a good idea so that's very good yeah sure do. we'll do that thank you hi hey hi it's mohammed here um i have a question hopefully is related to um um digital workplace so um uh, when you submit a request from digital workplace it, it creates a request id um, and yeah. and in smart it um you can search for that request id through global search mm -hmm. however um um in reporting or even within the ticket there's no reference to that request id um in the work order or the incident um that it's been um uh, this particular work order or ticket incident has been generated for this request or it there's no, there's no link um in the current version that we're using in in digital workplace um i wonder if that as it's if it's already been released or is going to be released you used to have it in um um remedy 8.1 in service request management yeah um but i believe it was taken away um any uh, it's it's there nowadays i don't remember what version do, do you remember silke or or john well it's you a can see the request id in smart it And when you click on it, you can actually see the question and answers uh, from the service request as well. Yeah, yeah it was it was a couple of versions back, or yeah, yeah, it's a while ago. Okay, maybe you can see you can you can see you can see in addition to that, use workflow to <clears throat> to map whatever you want um, to your backend for filling those items as well. So it's, it's pretty flexible in that sense too. But it's it's in there now. So what version are you on? Um, I have to check. Okay, I'll just okay. check. But in in the latest releases, it's there. It uh, I think about a year ago it was taken away. Okay, maybe twenty two one. I don't remember exactly. Thank you. We can find out if you go that it should be easy to find in the in the release notes of of uh, uh, ITSM. So if you go through the 22.1 uh, section of docs, you should be able to find documentation about this. So 
Let me know if you can't find it, and I'll, I'll dig it up for you afterwards. OK, anything else? Uh, can I request your advice on one of the things, you know, that uh, um, our clients are uh, commenting about is, you know, uh, they're used to having, like you are now talking about this old service request management, they're used to having. So they continue to create those service requests at the back of the fulfillment request. But then what happens is they will get two entries every time they submit uh, a ticket or request on the digital work list, they'll get two entries one with the id generated by digital workplace another with the you know, old srm req request mm. id so they'll get two of it so what is your advice to this upgrade the thing work. is yes, sir. The, i'll tell you what why this happens is uh, let's say you have a catalog item in DWP, which is creating an incident. Uh, that is what you're talking about. So when the incident is created, you have a pair, which is one service request ID created by DWP. It's the one without REQ in front of it. It's just a number. And then you have the incident number. So you have a pair which is linked. And then if you turn on automatic creation of service requests, yeah, you will get the service request, of course, because that's what you ask for. So DWP creates one, the and the DWP creates the incident. The incident is then creating the service request. That is what happens behind the scene. And yeah. The likely reason for you having that on, that thing creates a service request, is uh, that you want service requests to show up in DWP if you create them through ITSM or through emails in ITSM. Because if you if you create an incident in ITSM, you want the end user to see it in DWP. And that was the only option before was to uh, to create a SRM request. Nowadays, I think, do you remember which one? Uh, 221 or 05, you can uh, uh, actually create a catalog item and you can turn that thing off or on as you like. And you can also, uh, when you create an incident, create a catalog item instead of creating a, a service request. So I, I think, you can now handle most use cases. There might be something where you use SRM notifications instead of the WP notifications, where I've seen a, a couple of customers uh, having a bit of problem to uh, get the same notifications out that you got before. I think we're getting there pretty close. Does that answer your question? Yes, yes. And that's exactly the reason, as you said, the reason they continue to create the service requests of incidents is mm -hmm. one for notifications and two, there are SLAs on the service request form yeah. that need the, okay. It should be Thank. pretty close, especially when we get this new notification capability up and running, you will have full capability to, to do what you do today, I think. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? There's a lot of questions in the um, uh, Q and A, but I'm wondering if we do some of those, Kath, at the end. Um, if you've got some more slides you want to share, because I think we'll end up um, just answering questions. It's totally up to you how you'd okay. like to move forward. If there is any more verbal ones, take let's take one more verbal one if there is one. Otherwise, I'll talk a little bit about what yeah. we are working on right now. Okay, I, I can go for if it. That's <laughs> if that's all right. Um, hi. Um, so in the repeatable group of questions, can one of the questions be a table? So, uh, for example, you may yet. want to... Not yet? Not yet. No, we the the first release of it only had like two three field types. Yeah, in each of the patches we have added more and more. 
we have not considered using the table because I didn't really see a use case for it. So it's very interesting to hear what you look for there. That would be interesting. So, so, so we've got a form where we people are requesting to uh, create virtual machines in our internal infrastructure. And so, you know, the question is, how many machines do you want? And then we have a table of, you know, do you want a small, medium, large or extra large machine? And the table lists that, you know, a small machine has this much RAM, this much memory, sorry, this much CPU and this much disk space. So it's when we did it as a single form, we could ask that question. But to do it as a repeatable set of forms, uh, it, it, we can't do it with the table. So we've sort of got to choose one or the other. Hey, uh, yeah, hope that helped you to give you an idea of what we're trying to build. Do you mean do you mean that you want to have a table in the table, so to say? Because that no, is no, what, no. We, what you kind of say. The table is only there to show the you the, the users only choosing what size of machine they want. Yeah. Right? So they're choosing small, medium, large, or extra large. But yeah. before we had a repeatable group of tables. We showed them that small, medium, large as a table question because then you can give them extra um, uh, columns that give some more information about what is a small machine, what is a medium machine, etc. So that that thing, I yeah, <laughs> I would assume you could you could actually do this. I don't know, John, have you worked on the repeatable groups of questions because you are kind of used to mm, yeah no, not that, unfortunately not that particular use case um, yeah because the idea is that let's say you have you have um, uh, a virtual machine and you have different models uh, yes. could you use a lookup or something yes yeah, so we've got to look up into it uh, a form that has that list of four different types of machine yeah, and that lookup. I mean, the lookup only. You, you can either have a drop down list which says, "Oh, do you want a small, medium, large, or extra large?" But the users yeah. always then come and say, "Well, what's a small? How many uh, okay. CPUs that, do I get in a small?" You, oh, that's what you mean. Yeah, just... So we've we've sort of worked around it by saying "small" in brackets and then the description, but it's sort of a bit of a workaround. It's not exactly you, how we can you use like conditional or like. Um, response then if, if it's a small then um so it'll so that it'll it'll present another question right is is that what you're yes. referring to yeah. <laughs> yeah that's another yeah. way to do it but again you yeah, can't I think use be a easier. table in a repeatable group right so yeah yeah, yeah yeah true anyway uh, David, do you mind documenting this a little bit in a, sure. an idea and share that link with no me? Problem. And then I will bounce it with my engineers that have built this stuff. They might yeah. have ideas yeah. and it will help them take the next step because uh, we are almost done with the repeatable groups. Uh, there are a few small tweaks we want to do with it, but this okay. one... I, I, can, I can mock up something that yeah. sort of our existing screen and what we'd like it to look like and put it in an idea. Excellent, excellent. Appreciate it. Okay, that. thank you so much. Okay. Now I'll then talk a little bit about what we are doing for 20, what we call 23.3. Let me bring up back. Oh, I need to share as well, right? Um, green, share screen. This one. I hope. The other one. Is this the correct one? No, but we are now. Right, if you want to put it into presentation mode. Yeah. So, uh, as always, when we talk about futures, we need to have this uh, legal notice in there that uh, we're talking about things that have not been completed yet. And because of that, it is uh, important to understand that we talk about it here. We don't really want other vendors to know about it. That cannot be avoided, of course, but that's that's why we have this first part of it. The second part is uh, that even if we plan things right now, things change sometimes. So we cannot be 100% sure that 
what we talk about here is is going to happen. But my my view on this is that I talk about things that we are working on, things that I know is being developed, and the risk of not delivering is very small. It's just a matter of a little bit timing.